This is Grumpy SEO Guy, episode 35. If you're not using a SERP tracker, you're not actually doing SEO. You're listening to Grumpy SEO Guy, the SEO podcast that doesn't waste your time with nonsense that doesn't work. I'm the Grumpy SEO Guy, and I'm sharing with you the strategies that have helped me successfully run my SEO agency for the last 14 years. In this podcast, I'll be sharing my knowledge and experience, discussing tips and strategies, and trying to help you cut through the confusion that permeates this industry. If you listen to this podcast, you will know more about SEO than 99% of people on the planet. Ready? Let's get started. I'm the Grumpy SEO Guy. Let me tell you why I'm grumpy today. I'm grumpy today because nobody is tracking their keyword movement. Guys, if you're not tracking your keyword movement, you're not doing SEO. I see so many questions on Reddit where people will say something like this. We lost so much of our traffic this last week. Okay, well, that's a pretty terrible problem to have. So then I'll ask the question, well, what happened to your keywords? Where were they ranking and where are they ranking today? And they're like, I don't know, but we lost half of our traffic. I'm so frustrated at Google right now. Oh, well, okay, bro, but you didn't even answer my question and you don't know where your keywords are ranking? I thought you were doing SEO. Why are you asking in an SEO forum? Look, if you're not using a SERP tracker, okay, you're not doing SEO. So let's start from scratch here, okay? But before we do that, my lawyer tells me that I have to say this right now. A quick disclaimer before we get started, everything I say here is based on my experience and opinion from 14 years in the industry. I don't officially know how Google or any other search engines work. Everything I say here is hypothetical and based on my experience. This podcast does not constitute advice or services. What worked for me may or may not work for you. Okay, back to the show. And just a reminder, this podcast is free, but it costs me money and it takes a lot of time to make. So if you want to help support the show, you can do so on my Patreon, which is patreon.com slash grumpy SEO guy. Thank you for your support. Okay, back to the topic. What does SERP mean? SERP is an acronym, S-E-R-P. It stands for Search Engine Results Pages, okay? What does that mean? Who cares? Okay, basically what it means is where are you ranking? So if somebody asks you, where are you in the SERPs? Okay, S-E-R-P, SERPs. Just put an S in the end of it because you're making it plural. Where are you in the SERPs? They wanna know what position you're ranking in for your keywords, okay? I'm trying to rank for blue widgets. Oh, interesting. Well, where are you in the SERPs? Or what position are you in? Or where are you ranking? Those are all the same thing, okay? All those questions mean the same thing. Where are you in the SERPs? Oh, we're in position four. Okay, that's pretty cool. Now we have some data, okay. First of all, if you're not using a SERP tracker, pause this podcast and go get one and then come back and listen to the rest of it, okay? Now, there's a lot, and I don't care what SERP tracker you use as long as it's accurate, okay? Look, I use a SERP tracker called SERP Fox, S-E-R-P-F-O-X, SERP Fox. They're awesome, I've used them for over 10 years, and I'm not saying that because they're paying me because they're not paying me. I'm just telling you because they're awesome, okay? There's a lot of other SERP trackers. You can use whatever one you want. It doesn't make a difference as long as it's accurate. Now, the reason I say that is because 10 years ago when I started using SERP tracker, I used a trial of SERP tracker and there were two other popular SERP trackers at the time. And I remember one of them had terribly inaccurate data. Like it would tell me that I was in one position and I totally was not in that position. So I'm just like, well, not gonna use that one. And then there was another one that I was using and I honestly don't remember the name of it but I wouldn't tell you anyway, but I, I, don't, I don't remember what it was, but I quit using that one too. And I used SERP Fox because it was accurate and it was easy and the charts that it makes are cool. Okay, let's talk about SERP charts. Why is that important? But before we do that, what is a SERP chart? It's literally just a chart of your ranking per day. Okay, this is why it's important. Actually, there's many reasons it's important, but this is one of them. Let's say you want to rank for a keyword and you have a SERP tracker because you're actually doing SEO, unlike most people apparently, and you put your keyword in. Okay, so what you do is you put in your website and you put in a keyword and then every day the SERP tracker will search the search engines. Usually it's Google, but some of them will do multiple search engines and it will show you where you rank every single day. So in 10 days, you will have 10 data points, okay? In 20 days, you will have 20 data points and it's 
awesome because it shows you over time how your website is responding to different things that you may be doing or even if you're doing nothing at all, it shows you, are you maintaining your rank? Okay, so this does a couple things and we're gonna talk about all of them. Number one, by the way, this is in no particular order. Number one, if you're doing SEO work for a client, you should be tracking their keywords, okay? And this is how you can prove that what you're doing is effective, okay? Remember, all these SEO agencies don't get results because they're terrible, right? But if you can actually get results and show them with the SERP tracker, hey, look, before we started, you were down here in position 45, and now you're up here in position you know, seven or whatever, anything that's a positive movement, that proves that you're doing effective SEO, okay? That's how you determine if an SEO campaign is working, okay? Now, somebody's gonna say, well, no, because the purpose of SEO is to get more traffic. Okay, no, you can buy traffic. So getting more traffic doesn't mean your SEO campaign is working, okay? And then that same person is gonna say, well, no, because because if you, if you don't do the right keywords, then you're not gonna get the traffic. That's a fair point, but you're literally making an argument that shouldn't be happening right now because obviously you need to pick the right keywords. What are the right keywords? We might do an episode on this later, but okay, one is the keywords that your client wants to rank for, even if they don't have a good number of searches per month, which might actually happen. And I say this because we had a client who was obsessed with a certain keyword and ranking for it, even though it had zero searches per month. So I was like, hey, and by the way, I've talked about this on the episode called the best and worst clients I've ever had and what I learned from them, which is episode six, if you feel like listening to it. Anyway, he was obsessed with this keyword. I'm like, there's no searches per month. You're going to get zero traffic from this keyword. He's like, I don't care. I want to ring for it because this other guy that I hate rings for it. I was like, okay. So we made them rank for it and he was happy. I don't know. It didn't get any traffic from that keyword, but you know what? There were other keywords we got lots of traffic from. So who cares? Anyways, the other good keyword is a keyword with not insane competition and a decent number of searches per month, okay? But we'll talk more about that later. But the point is, and I'm only I'm only mentioning this because there are some scammy SEO agencies that will rank you for keywords that are easy but get zero searches per month. And then they say, well, look, we got you at the top of the search engine, but it's for like keywords that don't give you any visitors. So who cares? Like literally it doesn't matter. The only reason I'm even mentioning this is because occasionally you may have a client who wants to rank for a keyword, even if it doesn't get any visitors per month from that keyword. Just just go with it if they want to. Like, honestly, just rank them. It won't be hard, probably, because there's no competition because there's no searches per month. So, like, it doesn't even matter. I think I ranked them with, like, one or two links, and it took, like, one day. Might have taken two days. It was years ago. I can't remember. But the point is, low competition doesn't take a lot of work. I think it was one. I honestly think it was one backlink from our group of blogs. I built one backlink using that keyword in the anchor text. And by the way, if that part of the sentence didn't make sense to you, go listen to episode 29 and then go listen to episode 30, but mostly listen to episode 29. Okay. So we had that keyword in the anchor text and in like one day, it may have been two days. I can't remember, but I'm fairly confident that it was one day. Like he was in position two or one or something. I don't know, but he outranked the guy that he hated. So like whatever, I don't know. Okay. (laughs) Anyways, look, so yes, people who say, we got to pick the right keywords. They have a point, but assuming you've picked the right keywords, you know what? Let me not even define what right keywords means right now. Cause I don't want to sidetrack this episode any more than I already did. So assuming that you have selected the right keywords, the purpose of SEO is to get the website to the top of the search engines. Okay. That's all the purpose of SEO is. And I'm just going to say this again, because somebody always misunderstands this and there's always confusion. SEO is not website design. SEO is not conversion optimization. SEO is not anything besides getting the website to the top of the search engines when you search for certain keywords, okay? That's the purpose of SEO. There's lots of agencies that offer those other things, but I'm not saying they're jack of all trades, master of none, but I'm pretty much just gonna mention that expression in case maybe you have never heard it before. The other thing about that is 
most SEO agents, and this look, this might not be true in every case, but okay, I'm just sharing what I've seen. Most SEO agencies, okay, that offer all the things, right? They do SEO and they do web development and they do conversion optimization and they do paid search and they do like all the other things that you can even possibly think. They're, they're just middlemen. They're literally, they probably do none of them and they probably outsource everything. Okay, what does that mean? There are two problems with that. Problem number one, it means it's gonna be impossible to get a hold of anybody who can answer your questions. Why? Because let's say for example, they're outsourcing to my agency, okay? By the way, companies who outsource never tell you that they're outsourcing, okay? So you think that whatever SEO agency is actually doing the work for you, but they're not because they're paying us to do it, okay? So then you ask them a question. They don't know the answer. They have to email us. We give them the answer. They repeat the answer to you. That probably took a long time. And if you have follow-up questions, well, they're not going to know the answer to those either. So they're going to have to email me. It's annoying, okay? The other thing that middlemen do is they raise their prices. If they're paying us, and this is just a sample number, I'm just making this number up. If they're paying us $5,000 a month, okay, they're definitely charging you more than $5,000 a month. Probably. Look, I know scenarios exist where that might not be the case, but let's not get into them. But I just want to mention them. Anyways, middlemen charge you too much money, okay? If you're paying some full service internet marketing agency to do your paid search and your SEO and your conversion optimization, and your web design, and your social media, like whatever, and all the things, right? I guarantee you, you're paying them way more for all of those things than you would pay individually. Now, to some people, maybe it's worth having all of that in a single location, right? Maybe they don't know, maybe they think that it's all connected. And honestly, people who don't understand SEO actually think that that's how it works. Just like another common misconception is people think that SEO is like, getting a plugin on your WordPress site. Like I've literally, this is so off topic, but I'm just gonna say it anyway. I've literally had people tell me that they think that what I do is installing on their WordPress site an SEO plugin and typing the keywords in to the plugin that they want to rank for and that's what I do and that's SEO. And then they're like, why do you charge monthly? Isn't that a one-time thing? And then there's another conversation that comes after that because that's literally like less than 1% of what, you know, you would do with SEO. But that's what people think. That's what people think. Do you know, oh my gosh, one of my biggest pet peeves is people, okay, like no no offense if this is any of you guys, okay? But I'm just gonna tell the story anyway, I don't care. One of my biggest pet peeves is web designers, okay, who offer SEO as a service. And it's literally like, it's literally like installing a plugin. Okay. Like it's not going to rank them for anything. It's not going to, it's literally not going to do anything. Okay. But they're charging more money to their unsuspecting client who actually feels like that is SEO and th they're not going to get any results. Like, but what does a plugin do? Come on. It like optimizes your, your keyword density. Well, that's good for avoiding penalties. Okay. Like I'm not saying that WordPress plugins are pointless. I'm just saying they're not going to get you to the top of the search engines, which is what the point of SEO is. Anyway, I know so many web design people, web developers, independent consultants, people who own small little web development agencies that offer an SEO package. And it's always like an upcharge, right? Of like a couple hundred dollars or something. And it's like, we put an SEO plugin on your website. Like, okay, cool. You're basically just like ruining the, the reputation of the SEO industry. Because then I talk to those people in the future and they're like, well, we had this web design agency who did our SEO. Oh no, our SEO is good. Our web design agency did our SEO for us. Oh really? What did they do? Well, I think they did a WordPress thing. I think they, I think, I think they installed a plugin. Um, but anyway, we don't need SEO because we, they did our SEO for us. And then I'm like, oh, that's very interesting. And then depending on how crabby I'm feeling at the moment, I will say, and you guys, I'm the grumpy SEO guy. So this is pretty much every time I have this conversation, I'll say, oh, so you're at the top of the search engines for your keywords then. And they're like, <laughs> they're either like, I don't know. Or they're like, no. <laughs> well, if you're not at the top of the search engines, you haven't had your SEO done properly. Anyways, and if they if they even know, because they're probably not using SERP trackers anyway, although they should be, but you kind of can't blame 
a regular person for not using a SERP tracker, like they might not even know what that is. They probably don't even know that the purpose of SEO is to get to the top of the search engines because their web design agency who sold them SEO, like told them that they did their SEO and now they don't think that they need SEO anymore despite not ranking for anything. So I don't know, maybe it's an education thing. I don't, I don't know what to tell you. I am so off topic right now. Let's get back on topic. Anyways, the purpose of SEO is to get beneficial movement in the search engines. How do you tell if that's happening? With a SERP tracker. Go get a SERP tracker. I don't care what SERP tracker you use, but SERP Fox is pretty awesome. I would highly recommend checking them out. Um, S-E-R-P-F-O-X, SERPFox.com. They have a free trial, or at least they did last time I checked, which was like last week. They have a free trial where you get 10 keywords for free. So go try it. And if you go to their page and um, I think it says like pricing or packages or something, it's like not on there. You have to, you have to, it's a, it's got a slider. You have to go to the left in order to find it. So don't email me and be like, eh, you see the free trial. Cause first of all, I don't work for Surf Fox and I can't help you with that. But number two, you do have to go to the left. It's kind of hidden, but they're awesome. Number two reason why it's important to use a SERP tracker. Okay. This has happened a lot on Reddit too. Somebody will say, my site dropped out of the search results. Oh, that sounds terrible. I'll say, well, where were you ranking and where are you ranking now? And they'll say, I don't know. And then I get downvoted. Okay, well, thanks for the downvotes, guys. Anyway, let me tell you why I'm asking that question. There are penalties that accompany very specific SERP movement. Let me give you an example. Now, I'm just randomly using these numbers. These numbers are not exact, but you will understand the concept. If you don't understand it from what I'm saying, plot them on a chart yourself or like do it in Excel or something. But I'm pretty sure that you'll understand what I'm trying to say. Let's pretend that your page was in position five. Okay, let's say you position five and then the next day you're in position five and then the next day you're in position six and then the next day you're in position five and then five and then five and then six and then five and then four and then five. So like you're pretty much in position five. Okay. Now all of a sudden one day you're in position 70. Okay. And then the next day you're in position five and then the next day you're in position 70 and then the next day you're in position four. And then the next day you're in position 71. And then the next day you're in position 74. And then the next day you're in position five. And then the next day you're in position 77. And then the next day you're in position five. Do you understand what I'm saying? You're going from good ranking to bad ranking back and forth every other day. And it keeps going like that. Okay. So if you're tracking your SERPs, you will have this data. If you have keyword movement that looks like that, that is a penalty. That is not an algorithm update. Okay. That is, well, it might be more than one, but that is an over-optimization penalty. Okay. When you get an over-optimization penalty, that is what the SERP movement looks like. Okay. And then what will happen is it will be like one to like a handful of weeks of that kind of movement. And then you will disappear from the SERPs. Now you're not de-indexed. Well, you're probably not de-indexed. If you search for your site using site, colon, no space, and then your domain name, you will still be in the SERPs, but you probably are not going to be in the top 500 because you have a penalty. And that specific type of keyword movement means you have an over-optimization penalty. Now, if you want to know what that is, go listen to episode two, where I tell you different kinds of penalties, how to fix them, how to avoid them, and how to identify them. Okay. That's another reason to use a SERP tracker because then you know, well, Google didn't make an algorithm update. Stop complaining. What happened is you got a penalty. So all these people are like, I don't know what my keyword movement is. You're not doing SEO and I can't even help you because I don't even know. All you told me was my keyword dropped. Okay, cool. Do you know where you were? No. Do you know where you are now? No. Okay. How do you know that your keyword movement even dropped then? Maybe that search suddenly got fewer searches per month. That could be another reason why your traffic uh, reduced. So I don't know, just just track your keywords. Just, just stop, go to SERP Fox or wherever and just get a, get a SERP tracker. Now let's talk about more reasons to use SERP trackers, okay? SERP Fox, I don't think it's very expensive. I mean, it costs a lot of money if you wanna use like a lot of keywords, but 
most people probably are fine with hundreds or maybe 50 keywords that they're tracking, okay? I don't know, maybe you work for a huge agency and you have thousands of keywords that you're tracking, okay? Good for you, that's awesome. But like most people I would expect would be fine at like tracking 100 keywords or like 200 keywords. Or I don't, I don't remember what the breakdown is, like per package, but like whatever. So it's not even, it's not even that expensive. Now, why am I even mentioning this? Because some of the more expensive SEO tools might include a SERP tracker. That's cool. But if you don't have a hundred dollars a month to spend on some other SEO tool, that doesn't mean you can't monitor your SERPs. It just means use a SERP tracker. It's not expensive. I mean, like, I don't want to say that and like offend anyone. I don't know what like anybody's finances are. Okay. But I'm saying just, if you don't have any money, go get a free 10 keyword trial package from SERP Fox because 10 is more than you're tracking if you're not tracking any at all. And it will at least help you a little bit. I think the restriction, I think you might only be able to use one website if you have the free package, but that's still better than none. So you literally don't have a reason to not be tracking your SERPs. Now, if you're already using one, good job. This episode probably wasn't super helpful for you unless maybe you didn't know about the um, over-optimization penalty keyword movement. Anyway, let me tell you another reason to use one because there are some well-known SEO tools that kind of track your SERPs, but don't really. They might have your keywords and sometimes they will say something like, where are you ranking today? And it will have a number. Where were you ranking yesterday? And it will have a number. Where were you ranking a week ago? And it will have a number. Where were you ranking a month ago? And it will have a number. That's not really useful, okay? Like, you can't identify a cert penalty if you only have four points of data today, yesterday, a week ago, and a month ago. That That's not specific. That's four data points in a one month period. Nope. What you need is 30 data points or 31 or because I know somebody's going to email me and be like, well, you forgot about February or 29 or 28 data points in a month. Okay. Like I'm just saying that is way more helpful. And, and finally, the last reason that you need to be using a SERP tracker, I'm sure there's more reasons, but this is the last one I can think of right now is because you can pick your own keywords. There are some other SEO tools out there that will tell you what you're ranking for, but it's random phrases that somebody may or may not even search for. You know what I don't care about? Well, actually, I, let me say that differently because knowing those might actually be beneficial, but you need to pick your keywords. Look, if a client hires you and says, we wanna, we wanna rank for the following keywords, right? Like blue widgets and where to buy blue widgets and how to paint a blue widget or well, I don't know, whatever, like, painted a different color blue or something. I don't know. It doesn't matter. If they give you specific keywords, you need to be able to track the movement for those specific keywords, not the random ones that your SEO tool tells you about because nobody cares about those. Although you can sometimes get some cool ideas from those, but like for the most part, I don't care about some random obscure long tail keyword that like two people searched for in a six month period. That's pretty awesome, but you know what I'm not optimizing for? That keyword, because I don't care, unless it happens to be an awesome keyword, make sure that you check keywords and because you can always find some cool ones. But you get the point. If a client or you, maybe it's your own website, has specific keywords that are the preferred keywords to rank for, you need to go and type them in your SERP tracker so it will record those keywords and not other dumb stuff that you don't even concern yourself with. Okay, anyways. You guys, if you're not using a SERP tracker, you're not doing SEO. The first question that I always ask people is, where are you ranking for those keywords? And the second question, if they have some issue, like we lost our ranking or something, is where are you ranking for them today? And sometimes they can't answer that question. And then I will say, can you send me your SERP chart? Because the first thing I want to look at is the movement. Do you have an over-optimization penalty? Because you can sometimes tell from looking at the movement. If they send me like a table that says, where am I today and yesterday and one week ago? Like that, does, that doesn't help. That doesn't help at all. That shows like a general trend, but just go get a SERP tracker. That, just stop, go. Pause this episode. Did you pause it already? Pause it now. Pause, click pause, go get a SERP tracker 
and then proceed with whatever you were doing because you just started doing SEO. If you just register for a SERP tracker today, then you just started doing SEO today. I don't care what you're doing for the last however long your career was, okay? If you're not tracking your SERPs, you're not doing SEO, period. Um, and just for fun, email me and tell me what SERP tracker you use because I just wanna know, because I'm curious what other ones people are using. On that note, um, Here's, here's a fun fact. I should probably tell you this now. A lot of SEO agencies like to post SERP charts on their website, okay? So I'm gonna, give you, I'm gonna give you two pieces of advice, okay? When you're looking at any SERP chart that somebody posted, because maybe you're considering them as somebody that you might hire, okay? Which, which makes sense. I would definitely look at case studies. Case studies should definitely include SERP charts. But I have two things to tell you, okay? Two enormous caveats for that. Number one, well, kind of caveats. I don't know. I'm just going to tell you. Okay. Number one, if you ever post a SERP chart, please watermark it. I don't care how you watermark it, but I'm not going to say that people have never stolen other people's SERP charts and claimed that it was theirs. If somebody posts an unbranded SERP chart on the internet, any scammer can take it and post it on their website and say, look at this great movement we got, but they didn't because they're a scammer. So Watermark everything. Never, ever, ever. I don't, okay, and I'm, I'm literally, I'm literally not joking. Never send a SERP chart to a client that isn't watermarked or branded. Okay, never post one online that isn't watermarked or branded. Never, never permit them off of your computer without branding or watermarking them. Okay. Seriously, because some scammer will steal this. If it's a if it's a good SERP chart, some scammer will steal it and claim it as results that he got. Okay, so don't. Okay, number two, this should go without saying, but I'm gonna say it anyway because I've seen this happen. <laughs> okay, if somebody is posting the results on their website, hey, look at this before. Or not, I don't want to say before and after because the SERP chart shows day by day, but you get the point, right? Look at this positive movement we got please confirm that it is an actual SERP chart and not an Excel chart, okay? I have seen people make fake SERP charts in Excel and be like, look at this movement we got. Um, right, that is an Excel chart that you literally made yourself in five minutes. Now, maybe it was based on actual data, but what's the reason that anyone would ever use an Excel chart are they, are they manually checking it every single day and logging the data or are they lying and they're just trying to make themselves look like they're effective when they're not? I would bet you that it's that one. Anyways, um, and fun fact, I, not really a fun fact, but like back in the day, because I've only been using a SERP tracker for like 10 years, okay? So for the years before that, I didn't, first of all, I didn't know that SERP trackers existed, but you know, and then as soon as I found them, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so much easier and better than uh, what I do. Let me tell you what I did. I would start, before we started working together, I would search for their keywords and I would, in Google, and I would scroll down until I found them, like whatever page they were on. And then I would screenshot it, okay? And I would save that as like before. And then when we were done on with a package or whatever, I would do it again and I would find their keywords again and I would screenshot it and hopefully it's on a better page, you know, but it was kind of easy back in the day um, because Google used pages. So you could just, you know, make the window really big or like make all the, all the font really small or something. And so you could see the page number and then like where that site was on the page. So it would say like page four and you know, they're in like the second position and it's like, okay, cool. Page four, number two. And then like later on, they're like, page one, number nine or something, right? And you could see that it was page one and that they were like in the ninth position. You could say, look, positive movement. We were an effective SEO agency. So anyway, that was like, that was <laughs> that was no fun though. Cause like sometimes it was hard to find their sites and you have to like go to the next page and then do like a find and then hit next until you like find their website, whatever. It took forever and it was, it, I don't, it just, I mean, it worked, but then they made SERP trackers and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is sweet. So started using a SERP tracker instead. Anyways, go get a SERP tracker if you're not using one, because I don't know what you're doing if you're not using one, but you need to go get one. Okay. I hope this was a helpful episode. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you enjoy this podcast, please leave a review. It would really help the show out. I hope this episode was helpful. If you have any questions or want to suggest a subject for a future episode, 
You can contact me on Reddit. My username is Grumpy SEO Guy. You can visit the Grumpy SEO Guy subreddit, or you can email me at hello at grumpyseoguy.com. If you email me, please either whitelist my email address or check your junk folders because I've been told that my replies are going into the junk folder and it's probably because we're talking about things like SEO and backlinks and I think those words will classify an email as spam. And if you want to support the podcast because it's the best source of SEO information on the planet and it's free, you can do so at patreon.com slash grumpy SEO guy. And I will talk to you later. You're listening to Grumpy SEO Guy, the SEO podcast that doesn't waste your time with nonsense that doesn't work. Join us next Wednesday when we talk about the secret world of SEO agency warfare. If you like corporate espionage and treachery, you'll enjoy this episode.